Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Talking Cop. It is Sunday night. It's me, Gav. It's Keith. It's Emma. It's Shawnee. And Liverpool have gone two points clear at the top of the Premier League after beating Brighton by two goals to one today. And Man City and Arsenal drew nil nil at the Etihad in front of loads of empty blue seats, which um, just does not enough made off, in my opinion. Um, but listen. Um, we didn't have a reaction show today, it's Easter Sunday, people are doing stuff, so we said we come on here tonight and we look through the game and we'll get all your views and everything else, so if you have anything, throw them into the chat, we read out as many as we possibly can. Keith, I'm going to come to you first, um, it wasn't swashbuckling from Liverpool, it wasn't kind of, you know, a statement performance, it was a win in a tight run-in where, you know... Results are forced, performances are probably second, and Liverpool probably just done enough to get the three points there today. Yeah, I think the key is getting the three points, you know, at this stage of the season. Look, we all know we're in a, an excellent position here in a title race, and we're down to the home straight, so the important thing is to get the, the win. Performance is nice, but the reality is three points is all that matters. I think there's other games where... You know, we'd be looking at probably trying to close a goal difference um, thing on Arsenal and starting maybe with Sheffield United during the week without losing focus, you know what I mean? Just yeah. get the three points is the main thing. But today wasn't that, do you know what I mean? Today was not that day. It was a tricky game. Brighton, we all know, are a good team. We all know that we've had trouble with them in the past, certainly with the Zerbi. And it was just about getting the, the three points today, which we done. And look... I thought we were good. I thought it was. I thought we were really good today. Um, they're not a, a, an easy team to play against. And Sean, you was mentioning it earlier in our WhatsApp. You know, they're a, they're a pig of a team to play against when they're on it. So yeah, delighted with it. Swash Buckland, maybe not, but I think we could have been more comfortable than it turned out to be, and probably should have been more comfortable. The only thing that Swash Buckland is bleeding Keith's mustache. Well, I'm just. Do you know what? You've just. You've just. <laughs> like sure. O'Shane says, mustache Keith on fire. Um, somebody else there had a nice thing about it as well. Um, ah, it's gone on my screen now. Um, it was I'll, I'll get it for you. But Keith, talk to us through the moustache before we go on any further, so there's not no confusion. Um, what's so going, what's what's going on, Keith? Listen, if thirty two year old Phil this some, Foden is, can draw on some, his head and shave his eyebrow, <laughs> I'd have a fucking moustache like this. Draw it on his head, um, like he's just he has walking around, and all, scrawling all crayons on himself. Age of him, people think he's a young flea. He's not a young flea. He's fucking, he's older than Shani for fuck's sake. So now, you know, if he's able to get away with that, he's like, do you know what he's going to look like when he's forty? He's going to be like your man LV seventeen. You know, your man Brian Harvey. That still thinks he's about twenty. Yeah. He'd be going around with a baseball cap on yeah. sideways and all gigs, that. And his eyebrow shaved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. jeans down yeah. around his blade and his arse. That's what he'll be like. But no, do you know, my daughter was messing with me moustache the other day and started twiddling it like that and said I look like Mario. And I didn't really get. I think it was a compliment. You know, I didn't think it was a compliment. But um, I decided that's what we're going to do now. We're going to just have a little tash and see how it goes. Yeah, you know, anyone want to comment on Keith's moustache? I think it's phenomenal. Yeah, I think it's a, it's an absolute wonderful bit of craftsmanship. <laughs> Someone says you look like you. a young uh, your Captain Boards. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Swordsman back in his day, I heard. Swordsman back in his day. Swordsman in the realm. Absolutely <laughs> football man as well, I heard. <laughs> yeah. Keith, Keith or Dick Dastardly? That's the question that comes from Thor. Um, Emma, anything on, on the Tash before we move on? I, I, I'm quite jealous. I've tried to do it before and couldn't manage it, so fair play to Keith. Have you? <laughs> Passio yes. asks, is Keith auditioning to be the Monopoly man? <laughs> <laughs> too small, too short. <laughs> pass 200, collect, collect 200, pass go, <laughs> right not, go to jail. <laughs> anyway, listen, um, it's fantastic. Look, you're a strong independent woman, Keith, you do what you like. There you go, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All it'll right. take is one negative comment and it's gone, you know, because I am a strong independent woman, you know, but, so. But you do, you do care about other <laughs> people's now, opinions. Yeah, for now it's here. It's staying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be trying, trying to hang me keys off that, man. You know? <laughs> Come here, Leigh. Yeah. The fact that he has moustache wax means he's given it a yeah. go for the yeah. long haul. Yeah. He's committed to it. Yeah, he's gone down to Boots and he's went, listen, what do I do? <laughs> Yeah. And they've absolutely <laughs> kitted him out 
Full kit, yeah. full kit wanker. But come here. Talk to uh, me, Sharon, uh, behind the counter and build. What do I do with this mustache to make it? Any make idea, it Sharon? <laughs> come here. What are you thinking, Sharon? Listen, <laughs> come here. I ask you, are you keeping it for the run in? That's what Ashley asks. Well, yeah, it's, you know, why not? If the run in lasts a couple of days, certainly. Can, can, we, can, we, can we do a deal with you? What? Will you keep it until Liverpool lose again? Promise. I'll try, yeah. I'll, I'll try. Stop putting that juju on it. Will you give it over? Please. Leave it. Do what you want, Rick. Do no, you want. don't do what you want, Rick. Let's pressure you and do stuff to annoy you. Yeah, because if you get, well, if you get beaten on bleeding Thursday, then it'll be the end of it and it'll be no crack. <laughs> yeah, that would be great crack. Yeah, but then we can blame Thursday on him. Keep it until we win the league. Okay. We'll see. We'll Five see. years down the road. We don't want really to be. <laughs> yeah. Five years down the road. Go around like some we homeless We played Fuman Chew. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, right. Listen. He, he will keep it. Um, let me see. Let me see. Who's in here? Who's in here? Who can I pick? Who can I pick? Kev O'Sullivan is in. Kev is picking the uh, swear jar for Shawnee tonight. So um, it stands. I'm there to you. <coughs> no, you haven't. You haven't. But listen, don't worry. I'll, I'll get on to the, some penalty decisions yesterday and that'll sort all out. Anyway, he's on four quid at the moment. I think that's what it is. Fiverr. Oh, Fiverr. You're on a Fiverr? Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, he's yeah. on a Fiverr at the moment. Um, Kev O'Sullivan is counting the uh, swears tonight from Shawnee. And there is a couple there that are worth three and four quid. Um, what, what's the one you, you what's the one he likes to use? There's a word he loves saying. I can't think of it. It'll come back to me. It's worth a fiver anyway, if he says it. I don't think he will say it tonight, but I'll remember it in a minute. Anyway, Shawnee, on to you. Um, we win the game. We get the three points. Um, the lineup is what you expect. You're probably going to come. Kanati, Kwanzaa, what will happen there? Kanati mm-hmm. does play for France, I think, the second game of the international break. But listen, he obviously has a plan in place for games coming up. But like, just to go back to the start, Shawnee, going into this one, you know, they're not in great form, Brighton. They, they're missing some key players for them. But no matter what way you look at it, you know, and they, we were talking about during the week and you were saying to me, like, does Airby worry me because he, his teams have a hard about getting a hide and every now and then, but they're just a nightmare to play against, particularly for us, Shani. And that's what I was thinking going into this. They're going to be awkward, but we just have to go and win it. Yeah, and I think Keith alluded to it earlier on. We we have struggled against the Zerbys Brighton um, since he's come in. Um, watching the game today, you could see why they, that, that they have a punch on t- to get a bit of a hiding every now and again because they do like to play a little blind pass and it's not, it, it is high risk football. But, but what it does do to, I would say, I would I would consider us a, a high quality footballing team. Um, they turn every one of their attacks into what seems like a counter attack even when we've not had the ball they they said this it's it's a mad goal kick they do where the centre back goes back to the keeper and then the keeper goes back out to the other centre back and it's like a little trap and it seems that it, it, it was catching us up until the 70 minutes today and I was going how have we not copped on to this but the, the, the other side of it is your man Van Hecke and your man Dunk if you don't press them, they just do the diag to the two boys who are. So it, they're a really, really, really tough nut to crack. They execute that plan really well. If you do press them, they just pop it around you and then it's their midfield tree and their front tree bearing down on your goal. And it, ha- it happened an awful lot of the time. Now, we limit the amount of chances that they do get, to be fair. I think the other nine shots on, on goal in the they're whole. A real, they're, they're a pig. They're a pig of a sort. And it made for a really, really uncomfortable view for me because it, being the home team, you'd expect Liverpool to, OK, we're going to dictate the pace that this game is played at and what way it's going to be played. But it doesn't work like that with Brighton because they're like, you want to press us, we're just going to pop around you. Not going to put any pressure on the ball. All right, we'll go along. And they were setting that trap all day. I don't like. I don't know whether you know. I, when I was watching the game, I was thinking to myself, go to Bradley. Give Bradley the ball. The amount of time Kwanzaa's on the ball and Bradley's high up and, give Brad- and they're just waiting for that because if they turn you over there, you're in big trouble. And I think they give a goal away, away to Brighton like that. Robbo gets caught and they catch us in the exact same position. And you can see Liverpool just go, do you know what? We're just going to relax. We're going to take the extra pass. It's going to be a little bit slower. We did struggle to move them around. They're a really, really difficult note to crack. And I think, we look, we were 
does he have a winners? Totally. I, I don't think it's a game where we rolled our luck particularly. And um, we had we had good chances. That keeper makes a wonder save in the ninety minute from from Mo. I think that the the decision making in the front three it is poor at times, which it has been in games. And I still see Sabazloy and, and Salah getting back to full fitness. But again, Gav, I I do think the level of performance will have to raise if we are going to go on and win the title. And I don't I don't think anyone can really dispute that. I'm I'm not being ultra negative saying that. I just think you're gonna have to be a little bit more at it. But it was just about getting the three points today. I don't, it, it can go wide out. Like we could have beaten them five one after we went two one up, or they could have nicked the two well because they are dangerous. And I just thought, if I'm being honest with you, I wasn't mad on their game management for the last 10, 15. I thought it was I thought it was brainless at times. I couldn't believe what I was watching, and um, the decision making from some of the players, lads coming off the bench, Gakpo in, in particular, looked like he was at the run an ultra marathon. Then I have to come up bench play and play. Like he, could, he wasn't getting around or anything, and I was just thinking to myself, just just get this over the line, especially with the fix that following. Like I don't know about years, but when you look at a few weeks in advance and you see the fixtures, all right, Liverpool are playing Brighton that day. The day City play Arsenal, you've got to win there. There's no room for it. There's no margin for error. You got to be winning, especially when money are tight at rivals. I guarantee you to drop points, or if not both, which happened today, um, and we got the job done. Don't think the score flatters at all. I think we could have had two or three more. Um, but just a lie, we don't we don't have to play them again. I I, I just deal with them next year now. So they're, they're a pig of a side. And I mean that in the nicest way. It's not like you're playing a Stoke or a, or a West Brom where it's just difficult and it's just playing doghouse football. They're, just, they're a bit of an enigma. They're, they're a tough nut to crack and it's enough that we did crack. And I have to say, like just I was saying it again kill heads prevail that's what I thought even when we went all down I did one nil down I didn't think we were going to lose the game uh, to be honest with you I wasn't panicked I wasn't going oh Jesus that's not I was thinking get a goal before half time and we, and we win the game and and it did turn out that way but I will give credit to Brighton that a very good side and considering the players they lost in the summer I think that's seventh in the table that they doing okay yeah he's a serious manager at the Zerbi with obvious flaws in his game, but um, def definitely a problem. Good to watch, really, really good to watch. If I'm being honest, I I, yeah, I agree with the game management thing, and we will pop around different parts of the game when we look at the goals, and you know, and um, we don't kind of go through it minute by minute. But I do agree with your game management comment, um, about near the end, the last ten, probably fifteen minutes, well, maybe ten plus the injury time, which is fifteen, sixteen minutes, where Liverpool. The funny thing was. Brighton weren't doing an awful lot to try to get it back off us, but we just kept giving it to them. You know, I think Liverpool had a brawl to within 30 yards of Brighton's goal and turned around and played it back to Van Dijk. I don't think Brighton would have pressed the life out of us. You know what I mean? We're, we're literally going to them, run up here, here, here's the ball, now let's start a game of football from 30 yards from your goal and everyone's all over the place. And, and I agree with that. <coughs> with regards to up in, the, up in the performances, I agree with that too. But one, one thing I will say is, and, and Emma, I'll bring this to you, it's an international break. Every, it, it always feels a bit awkward after an international break. If players are away, some aren't. Some are training at the Axel for two weeks. Some had some days off. You know, they're coming back. And it always feels... And I think that... I actually think Man City and Arsenal suffered that a little bit today. But you get it out of the way, Emmy. You win it. And I said it to you afterwards. That's just a rhythm, mate. That one there is just a marker for rhythm for me. And... Like, don't get me wrong, if I'm sitting here on Tours United and Liverpool have won 1-0 against Sheffield United and we go, well, we won the game, but we weren't great, I'd be going back to Shawnee's comment going, do you know what? He was, you know, he had a point on Sunday. He fucking definitely has a point tonight. But, Emma, all things considered, we you know, still the players we have out, some coming back, some that were training here, some that were in international duty. It's never going to be pretty, is it? Like this isn't going to be this isn't going to be well nine games left now, but this isn't going to be ten games where you're kind of going, oh Liverpool are just sweeping all you know in front of them. It's not going to be like that. And I think from Arsenal and, and City games today, it's not going to be like that from them either. This is where the nerves start to kick in. This is where you're overthinking about everyone else around you. You just have to get the job done. But Shawnee has a point as well. You need to manage games better, and that level needs to go up probably ten percent. <coughs> Yeah, do you know what? From looking at it today, and it was it was actually uh, refreshing not to have a game at half twelve after an international break. But I don't think the 
the, the, I thought we looked a little bit disjointed at times and I don't think it was down to tiredness like it has done in previous times where people come back from international duty. It was like you said, I think it's more of a, a rhythm thing because remember, Salah didn't go away, Nunes didn't go away. There's a, there's a few of them that didn't actually go away. So some of them aren't in that rhythm. And then obviously mixture of tiredness as well. But if you were looking at the games that we have left, I, I never, somebody said it there a few minutes ago, we've won one in eight previous to today against Brighton. We Three of us were actually at a game where Brighton came back from 2-0 down and drew with us. Uh, uh, was it 2-0 down? Yeah, it was 2-0 down um, at Anfield. So they are, Sean, he's right, they're a, they're a tough team to play. Like, do you know what I mean? And it's, I think uh, of the, and I don't want to be kind of, don't want to be disparaging towards Brighton, but of what's seen as being the the kind of the smaller teams, they're probably the one that plays the most like a bigger team. If that makes makes sense, they, they'll come and they'll have a go at they'll have a go at you. So yes, what will happen is is you'll see them getting like Shani says they'll get beaten or they'll have the odd result where they get beaten by I don't know Burnley, other teams like that, even Everton or something like that. I don't know who's beating them this season, and that's because the way they play doesn't work against them because those teams won't come out and press them. So they don't, the traps don't work. But it is, it's towards the end of the game, I said it to you afterwards, John Barnes needs to be in the access centre on Tuesday telling them all about how you should go to the fucking flag to run down the game because my heart was in my mouth. I didn't think that Brighton were ever going to create yeah, but anything, John, but it was like, yeah, but John Barnes but, didn't go to the corner. He knows more than most what you should. But it wasn't That's even about I mean. going to the corner. It was about just uh, keep But no, ball. you know what I mean? You know, game like, management. I thought Elliot came on. When Elliot came on, he kind of he did it better than most. Him and Bradley, two of the youngest players on the pitch, actually tried to manage the game a hell of a lot better than some of the more senior players. But it was just we've been so good at it all this season, and then the United game and the Brighton game, we decided oh game management is out the window. I thought we've been excellent at our game management this season, but just the last two games it seems to like I, I don't know what it is to be honest with you. But it is, it's three points on the board. It's probably, and again, I don't want to name other teams, but looking at other teams that have still got to come to Anfield, it's probably the the biggest banana skin. I, I thought, even watching videos, uh, uh, like other podcasts and stuff like that, they're going through each one of the club's remaining games. And they're saying that Liverpool will drop points to Brighton. They always drop points to Brighton. They never, they never have a good result against Brighton, and that was my fear today, especially coming to ten minutes. And there's very few games this season where you've had a one goal lead, and we're going into the last ten minutes of a game, and you're worried that we might actually draw the game or, or possibly lose a game. But today, I was like, these are gonna get a fucking goal. We're, we're literally handing it to them on a the plate. So look, it was great to get over the line, but like you said. When I don't think we're steamrolling anybody come between now and the end of the season. Very annoyed next Sunday, obviously. But um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be one goal margins, I think. And the, the same for Arsenal and and City. I watched that today. Wasn't great. Do you know what I mean? It's I'm sure you... it, 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 yeah. Um, I think I think all three will probably drop points between now and the end of the season. It's just who who's gonna drop the least. I don't see it. I don't see any of the three going unbeaten between now and the end of the season. Yeah. Someone asked me earlier. I think we and Paddy Lawson actually said to me earlier, "Did we win all nine? And I said, "No." Um, but I don't think you need to win all nine to win a title. I, th I think if you draw, win seven and draw two from here on in, you win it. Um, because it need it means City needing to win every game, and it would mean Arsenal needing to win eight and draw one. And I just can't. I just it. I'm not saying they're not good sides. And I'm not saying we're not a good side. I'm just saying when it comes down to the brass tacks of it, putting nine or ten, well, it'll be nine from from all of these now, from those two now, putting nine wins on the bounce with Champions League quarterfinals, possibly semi-finals, and a final in there as well. I just think as if if either of them win nine from here at the end of the season, fair play to them. That's all I'm gonna say. I think they win the title and fair play to them. But I I just can't say. Um, let's talk about a couple of players, Keith. Um, go on, I'm going to give you the easy one. I'm going to give you Alexis McAllister. Um, he gets booked fairly early on. For what I yeah. thought was a bit like, <laughs> what the fuck? Now, I'm not even going to get, get in. I don't even want to get into that fella fucking queue, right? Because 
Uh, we have to maybe touch on him a bit, you know. Right, we'll 20, bleeding, 20 fouls, 20 free kicks for bleeding Brian today in a game. Yeah. Yellow cards getting dished out for nothing. Yeah. And it's not necessarily about Q and uh, Taylor then does the other bleeding game. This nonsense with refs about refereeing different levels of games in different ways is fucking ridiculous. So you look at the City and Arsenal game yeah. and those kicks going in, uh, cynical fouls, mm -hmm. dragging back, pulling yellow cards every day of the week and Anthony Taylor lets them go. And he does it when we play Man City, he does it if we play Arsenal. He seems to think you referee top of the table games differently and you shouldn't. Whereas we had Kill on the other hand, who's giving out frees for bleeding everything. Um, and it's so frustrating. So I'm not necessarily about, he is useless, like, but it's the inconsistency and the way the ref is. I thought McAllister got shafted a bit. Yeah, he got an early yellow. And you're like, for fuck's sake, what is that for? And in your head, because the refs are so bad, right, you're worried that McAllister is now on a, he, he, he's walking a fine line. You know what I mean? That he could be sent off because one missed time tackle and, and, and he's gone. <laughs> And I remember McAllister's game against Brighton earlier on in the season. I thought he was very poor in it. Um, I thought it was like it, he was playing against his old team and I, I thought he was sloppy with the ball. He got caught out a few times. And I was interested to see how he reacted today. Like, was he still seeing himself as a Brighton player? Not as a Brighton player, but you know what I mean? Like, is he still Brighton McAllister or is he now Liverpool McAllister? And I'm seeing a player who... I think it's just absolutely flying at the moment. He ran the shit again. It's nearly every single game that he's dictating it. He's, he's controlling the play. He's controlling the, the tempo. He's controlling the momentum. He's putting in trail balls that we haven't seen in a long time from a Liverpool midfielder. So he's doing the little slide drill jobs that are going through. We had um, chances in the game all day today, boy. And I just think he's always looking to get on the ball and make things happen. I think, I think he was brilliant today. Obviously, I thought he was the man of the match by a country mile, and I think there was other good players there, but I thought he was so, so good. I think he's been... I suppose this will all depend on how the, the season finishes. One of the most important signings. I know Declan Royce gets a lot of love for what he's done with Arsenal, and, and, he, and he's an excellent player, and he, and he has really done well for them. But I think McAllister scares under the radar something terrible. 35 million. And what he's done to Liverpool has been absolutely phenomenal. So... I just think, you know, I could talk about this fella all, all the time. I think he's fucking great. He's my favourite Liverpool player in the current batch. And I thought he was excellent today. You know, he's... Someone in the comments said he looked a bit jaded, maybe. And look, the international travel stuff, I think his last game was Wednesday morning or something. So it wasn't like, you know, rushing back for a half-12 Saturday game. But... I thought, he was, I thought he was fine. I think he's doing a lot of walking there, doing a lot of the legging. Um, but it's just his, his control and um, dictating of the tempo. It's just what we need. I don't want to say it's what we, we thought we'd get with Thiago, but it's it's that ability to really... You go in there, you can control the game, but you can still hit the good passes. You can still do it. You know, if you look at... So Bosley, for example, I don't think any of us seen him coming in and his biggest asset being his running power and his engine. Do you know what I mean? And that's where Sir Bosley has landed, similar to what happened with Genie Vinaldum before. I think McAllister is shown that he has the craft and the goal that we've been maybe yeah, maybe missing, I'd say. You know, we haven't had many players like that. And I just think he settled in so well. To me, he's been one of the signings of the season. He's adapted when he's had to play six. He's moved around. He's gone back into a more familiar position for him where he's pushing a bit higher forward. And we're seeing the, the benefits of it every week. I just think he's absolutely brilliant. I think he's gone down as a shelf for that player of the year. <coughs> yeah, Kevin Sullivan says McAllister's pound for pound the best signing of the season. Royce is doing what a £100 million pound player should do, but Mac Mac McAllister is doing it at £45 million. The thing for me with him today is, is that he gets that booking. And against a team like Brighton that are very cute, quite nippy around midfield where, you know, you'll always get some technical players, but they always they seem very cute on the ball, Brighton. You know, they'll get that touch and they get away from you. And I was kind of going, he could be a model here for the second one. Just to, and, and, got, and then coupling that with the fact that the referee was the referee. And like you said, I've I seen the start area saying, um, somebody put up there saying every tackle Liverpool threw in today was given as a foul to Brighton. 
um, which I don't know if that's a hundred percent true. But twenty fouls against Liverpool today, and a lot of them I felt were soft. The way Boy, McAllister fouls for Liverpool, by the way. Yeah, the way McAllister decides. Okay, cool. Yellow card. What I'm going to do is I'm. He doesn't even go and play the percentages. He just goes and takes the game by the scruff of the neck, and says, "Right, that's enough." Right, we're not having any of this running against us, marauding against us. You two do your job there and just give me the fucking ball in Endo and um, Sabah's line. And right. I'll, do, I'll do the job. And he, I thought he was absolutely... He, you were saying he was man of the match by a country mile. I think it's more than that, to be fair. I think it's actually more than that. I thought Luis Diaz was really good today. We might go on to him a little bit. But I, he was he was head and shoulders and even more than that above everyone on the pitch today. The way he controlled it, defensively really good. Um just in play, really good, and then he's involved in the in the winning goal. You know, he's finding passes, and he's he's there. He's constantly there, and he's constantly on the ball, and he's constantly nipping in, and just everything is about us. Like it, it's interesting that someone mentions Royce there, but honestly, if Royce does that performance today, you can guarantee he's on Sky from nine a.m. to five p.m. tomorrow, and they're just showing clips of uh, Declan Royce, and that's nothing against Declan Royce, but it's just. It's not even under the radar how good he was there today, Keith. He was fucking brilliant today. And yeah. I, um, he's probably the difference between Liverpool winning and not li- winning the game, um, to be honest. Um, Sean, I'm going to... Uh, let me see. I'm going to bring you back in because your mic was making all sorts of mad sounds. But it looks like I'm it's having a blade mare, I am. Yeah, having a mare. Yeah, having a mare. Listen, That's uh, a loud. He's probably just trying to get away with the course and stuff. He probably just didn't get the money this week. <laughs> listen, no, listen, I'm having a fucking mare. There's one for the... There's one for the... Make down the the jar. <laughs> but um, but Shani, you spoke about your, the game management earlier. We go down, we go behind early, um, and when we went behind early, I remember it might have been you or one of your other, one of the other of the clan saying earlier of the Lawson clan saying you have to score first here. You don't want to give them the you know the the, the, the impetus to probably say right we can sit in now and we're good on the break. But I think Liverpool reacted really well to going behind. They did. It was it was a decent finish by Welbeck. Don't get me wrong. Um, but we reacted really well. We didn't panic. There would have been easy to panic there, flood forward. You're 2 0 down after 25, and then you're going, oh, for fuck's sake. We need one of these Anfield miracles again. But the reaction was really good, Shani. And it's, it, it, it's, it's a constant thing going on with us. Any setback, whether that's <coughs> we go behind, we're pegged back, or someone gets, we're 2 up and someone gets a goal, we seem to be managing these situations really well. It's just the experience, Gav. It's, it's the experience of being in these races for a long time. I don't know whether anyone else watched it. Van Dijk done an interview with Sky yesterday um, about the run in. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, you should have a look at it. Um, it's, a, it's a brilliant insight as to exactly how, maybe not how the squad thinks, but how he thinks. And it, it, it'll settle your nerves. Uh, it really will if, if you're of a nervous disposition for the next eight weeks. <laughs> I do recommend having a look at that interview because you just said, look, we know exactly what we have to do. Uh, he said we'll know a lot more about where we stand come Sunday and um, with the other game on uh, and then it's in he says but we just need to remain calm and, and trust in ability and you don't panic and you'll always get moments when you when you do your walk and oh, that's why even when we went 1-0 down I was thinking to myself right, no need to panic here we'll be okay you kind of go through the game and say although they're probably be the last team you want to be kind of chasing the lead again because they can just cut you open. They done it against us last year away. I remember they they, they, go, up, they go ahead of us and they absolutely mal of August because we're just headless trying to change the, chase the game. Um, managed the game brilliantly. I, I have to say, we are touching on the performance of McAllister. Unbelievable. Uh, oh, he's doing exactly what Thiago should be doing, what Phil <coughs> Thiago should be doing this team where he's just knitting everything together. The ball comes to him, he always looks like he has a, a, a an acre, uh, just all the time in the world. He's just a calm one. But for me, I, I, I don't know about I was really, really impressed by Kwanzaa today, especially in the yeah. second half, because I just think the man at Ringa is a, is a handful. Um, and, and Welbeck, he's, he's been going around the league years. He, you don't play for the teams he's played for. And not be a good player. He's, he's a handful. Welbeck is a re- he's, he's a difficult. He's, clever, imagine, isn't he? he's a clever he's a, player. Yeah, he's a centre half nightmare. Or, or I'd imagine he's just the type of player you just don't want to play against. I thought Kwanzaa was. I thought he, I thought he was absolutely excellent today, especially in the second half. Um, and and the most 
impressive thing about it is you, you could probably you could see there was parts of the game where he was struggling in the first half, but it doesn't affect him. He kind of plays his game, and that lad is going to save us so much money moving forward. You could see it was a test today for Bradley because it's kind of like going, all right, you're playing senior football now, kid. You're up against Estepina and you're up against, will I stay or will I go? These are happy for me to have the ball. What's going on here? Oh, I'm all out. And they, he managed the game well. Um, but again, I just it, it's a professional job done by, by Liverpool. It's a, it's a tail one out the gap sort of job. Like, but obviously, the last 10 minutes, just thinking to yourself, why is Gomez trying to punch that ball into the box? It's the 89th minute, my tail one yeah. up. Reset. Why is Gakpo playing one tails on the edge of the box, bringing it into the corner? I'm just thinking to yourself, what what are we doing here? It, it reminded me a little bit of the Palace away game under Brendan Rodgers where we tried to win 10 nil, And I was like, we don't need, we just need to win. We just we just need to get the three points on the bar here and move on. But considering we go behind <coughs> in the end, if you look at the game as a whole, if you're yeah, watching that, when you watch back the highlights there now in the final score, you think it, we were grand. Uh, Lalana gets a half a sniff at the end. Um, we were grand. They don't have many big chances in the second half. We were fine. They don't have many big chances after they got one nil up. Yeah, look, it's a job done. Uh, on another day, they might have caught you. I share them with sentiments when you think of yourself. We were at the Bryant game Gav, a few years ago where we dropped points and it was yeah. very similar to that. It's yeah. Helter Skelter. It, it's all out. It's, it's just Helter Skelter football. Um, yeah, I did. just it was a bit mad. There was just mad moments in the game today where I'm thinking, is Virgil van Dijk playing in the six? Why, why is why is Virgil van Dijk running past the end of the tackle, fellas? What's going on here? It was just mad. It was mad. Um, but yeah, it, it's gonna be like that now, isn't it? I, I'm with Emma. I don't see us blowing many teams out between now and the end of the season. I don't think fatigue will be an issue because we have some big hitters coming back off the back of a, of a good rest. I think you can't underemphasize the importance of Cordis Jones coming back into this team. I think that's huge. Yeah. It's something that hasn't been really spoke about because I think he's a player that goes massively under the right eye. He's one of our best performing midfielders before he gets injured. Um, he's been very key, he's been key to this team in a lot of games and he, it's going to be great to have him back. He's in full training. Trent's not too far away. Allison's not too far away. Please, God, Jota is, is back before long. Oh, I think we're in a really, really, really good position going into this toy race. And I love the... I'm all about looking into the narrative. And the narrative after that game today was that that was David and Goliath going head-to-head. We're all right. I'm, I'm OK with assuming that position. Next Sunday's huge. Next Sunday is monumental. I know Thursday comes before before that. But we they bloody down. I was a couple of weeks back and we, we owe them one. Big time, and one thing I will say is, I know I, I am getting ahead of myself here. I don't really care to be honest with you. I'm getting ahead of myself. Do what you want, Charlie. I, I will. Well, I'll yeah. tell you, nobody will do anything about it. That's just the way it is, isn't it? You do nothing uh, you want. You do nothing we, we've you want. gone, we've gone to Old Trafford way too many times in the past, and give <clears> these <throat> way too much respect for my like, and, and that has to stop and go out the window next week. I'll put. Now, good... I will. I'll put a hundred euro into the golf for me next Sunday if Liverpool drop a point at Old Trafford. That's fair. That's how confident I'm going to Old Trafford next week. Yeah, well, look, I'll just, and I wouldn't, I again, wouldn't say that if that FA Cup game didn't happen two weeks ago. But because yeah, that's no, happened just, two weeks ago, yeah. Liverpool are going to go in there. And uh, honestly, Liverpool are watching them yesterday going, Brentford are putting 30 shots on these fuckers. 80 fucking Everyone's putting 30 shots on yeah. them. Right. Everyone, well, exactly. I'm telling you Everton now, and all are getting for Log it now. If Liverpool drop a single point at Old Trafford next Sunday, I'll put 100 euro live on air into the, into the goal for me. That's how confidently I'm doing it. Yeah, right? but look, um, getting back to the Bryant game, it's one out of the way. It's just box ticking now, guy. Between now, and May. it's it's this is this is this is horrible. Like why you why do you don't I don't I don't enjoy this. I'm not gonna lie to you. I love it's it. Bleak, it's hard. It's hard. You don't love it. I do. You're, I love it. Not, I'll tell you why I love it. I'll tell you why I love it. Like, Give no, it I'll tell you why I love it. I'll tell you why I love it. Let me let me explain to you why I love it. You're like Dustin Hoffman and Rayman every twenty minutes <laughs> in your head. No, I'll tell you why I love it. Because the reason you have to love it is, is because you're in it, right? Yeah, there's no, only, totally. There's only there's, that, only there's only there's only there's only two ways you can be: is in this or not in it. So you can't be in it and not love it. 
You can't be because the other yeah, alternative is it. not I to be in it. I get it, but it is. It's. it's cool. I'm just. I'm, I'm, my just whole body is shaking other. every fucking day. I'm just yeah, I just need a big hug after every game. And I'll be down. Like, I'll drop down to during the week. <laughs> drop down to during the week. I'll bring a batch. I'm King Crisps butter. We're bring yeah. a whole lot. We go believe mad we will. Oh, Emma, Emma, we go. We go on. We go on little down, right? And I'm, you know, um, I want to go to Liverpool goals in a minute. <clears throat> and we've talked about all season about Liverpool record. The amount of points you've recovered from losing position is twenty plus points. I think at this stage now. That'll be twenty five today. Yeah, twenty five today. Now, we we feel that this is the start of the run in from today. We felt everyone felt that you know after the international break the run in starts. It's ten to go. Bump, 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 bump. Right. How much does that today stand to Liverpool in? A couple of weeks if we're one down at Fulham or in a couple of weeks if we're, you know, one nil down at home to somebody else. Like, we started to run in. I don't feel we're at our best. The players are probably, you know, coming back into the fray and boom, 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 whatever it might be. And we still go and do that. I, 25 points from losing positions is mad, right? To be in a title race and, and doing that is mad, like, you know what I mean? But how big is it, Emma? Because I, I, when, when this finished today, I said to myself, Brilliant three points. I hope these two fuckers draw, which they did. But the manner of it was like, oh yeah, do you know what? I I much prefer that. Now at the time being one 0 down, I didn't like it. But I much prefer that than winning two 0 and they get a scrappy one at the end. I just think there's there's, there's a lot more weight to what we've done today than a two one and they get you know Welbeck has won in the ninety fifth minute. I think it's huge that we just keep. I don't like going behind. You know, no, I know you think it's a it's a thing we do but <laughs> I don't yeah it's a ploy but I don't like going behind but but it has to be big for us where you know Quanta Bradley whoever these young young fellas wherever but we go a goal down and everyone's just going calm down this happens as loads we go go and win the game it has to be big and it's big on the other teams as well because I'm telling you now a fucking three minutes past two today Arsenal and City are sitting in the Etihad going oh and then we go and win them big yeah. has to be big. It's, it's, it's massive. And like we've spoken before about like in previous years where we if we go a goal behind, we, we would tend to panic. And in a lot of cases, we'd concede a second. But we've been galvanised now this season, probably toward, maybe towards the end of last season as well, when we kind of picked up our, our form a bit. And it galvanises you. Um, and the players, so as, as much as we're not panicking if we go a goal down, the players definitely... You don't see any panic out of them really anymore either. Like Shawnee said about Kwanzaa as well and Bradley, it would be a very easy for them to go back into their shell after conceding a goal today, but it didn't. They actually grew into the game. They got better as the game went on. Um, and it is, it, it's like you said, the manner of it, we went a goal down, we come back 2-1, great. So we're kind of nearly coming out of there, bouncing, right? Could have gone wrong at the end, but it didn't. Both City and Arsenal are leaving that game today feeling probably dejected because that was our chance. So we're, we have a pep in our step, pardon the pun, and they don't, basically. So, um, so yeah, going into their games, like the games that they have as well, like I know you said earlier on that like Arsenal will eventually, well, will obviously beat Luton, but Luton have been giving teams difficult games this season. Like there's... Who've they, we've got Arsenal have... Ah, that pony, Luton. that pony. They no, were no, up they, against Bournemouth and laying poor away a couple of that pony. They, they, they'll end up where they deserve to be. They, they, oh, no, no, I, I'm not, I've, no de- I've no doubt about that, but they won't. I don't think they make it easy for them. We've already said it, there's no easy games. But I would prefer to be going into this run of games now off the back of a victory rather than a, a, a draw. Because they, they've both dropped points now and they're chasing us. Um, it's just it's ex- like it, 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 it's it's exciting. It's it's somebody said earlier on. It's whoever blinks first loses, and that's probably the way it's gonna go. I think we want it more than either of the other two teams. Maybe not Arsenal. I don't know whether I, I'm not saying City don't want it. Arsenal probably want it too much that they're gonna get very emotional. I think. Whereas we've got players in the team that have done this before. We've gone up against City before. Like I said, we're galvanised. So we have the minerals. I'm I'm not sure whether Arsenal have the minerals. I know you doubt that, Gav. And 
But I just, we think, after, I just, I just think after 30 league games to be two points clear of Arsenal and people saying our Arsenal will fall away, I think it's a bit mad. I'm not suggesting they fall away, but I just think like they've got they one experience of they've one experience of this. We've been ding dong in battles with City for the last five or six years. Do you know what I mean? We've got t- players in the team that know what needs to be done to get over the line. Or there at our go to the last day. I'm not sure whether whether but guys, there's falling there's falling away and keeping the pace and they've never proved that yeah. they can keep the pace. City yeah. won I'm the not, league I'm, with four yeah, games. No, I'm, I'm not won the league with four games to go last year. Yeah. And and listen, so, uh, don't get me wrong, we could be sitting here in three weeks' time with t- on twenty three league games and Arsenal are fucking seven points off us. And you're going, they're seven off us with seven, six to go, it's over. You know what I mean? <clears throat> it's gonna be difficult for Arsenal, I think, to Get more points. You see, if Arsenal had lost today, I would have looked at it and went to myself, yeah, for them to get more points than both us and City, you know, is 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 a tough ask. But they still sit with two points behind us. They still sit a point ahead of City. Who would I back? On history, I'd back City to get more points than Arsenal. But you never know. And, and I'm not saying, I, I'm not big enough Arsenal up to win the league. I'm, all I'm saying is, is that with nine to go, none, none of these, not, not one of these three teams have anything to lose. So no. you know, it's there's pressure in different different areas. City have a pressure yeah. of four in a row. Liverpool have a pressure of club leaving. Arsenal have a pressure of you need to win something. You know, FA cups don't cut the fucking mustard when it comes down to what you've spent over the last three or four years and how you big up Arteta as the second coming of Christ. Well, so, Arsenal have been in a Arsenal heavily rely on the core of twelve, thirteen players yeah. to get them through. Yeah, yeah you seen that again today. Yeah, I think City, a couple of mountain injuries, um, gangs piling up, City, a couple of big big uh, league games sandwiched in between Champions League toys against Real Madrid. Like, Steve Murphy said earlier, Arsenal now have nine games in 29 days. Yeah, and it's going to, that is going to test them. Nine games and, in and, and, the, and the, the thing is, right, but providing where we do our jobs, it will require them to also be perfect, which is a monumental task for them uh, uh, genuinely and as much as it is for us so or what give what's given me solace at the moment is that trent jotte allison coming back otis jones coming back sabozloy recently back from injury and mo recently back from injury and you they, you can see they're getting up the pace if i had been in a case where we're full full throttle pedal to the metal since the start of the season with a full squad i'd be thinking it's right about now where you start to lag. Um, yeah. you, you like if you look at the the season where we lose the league on the last day and get beaten in the Champions League final, we scuttered over the line. That's it. We were on our on the bounds of our arse, uh coming into the end of the run in. Whereas I do, I will see, I can see like a bit of an injection given by the likes of Trent coming back and uh, and. Uh, Jones shot the uh, and Allison as well. Not that Bradley and Kwanzaa and the likes haven't been able deputies. Just even today, for example, if you've Trent in there, Brighton can't behave the way they behave because they're going. Oh, we, we we need you need to have someone pressing him. You can't be giving him time on the ball either. Like you know what I mean? They were happy for Bradley to have the ball. So it's it's horses for courses. I I think we need Jota. <laughs> we're gonna need Jota. We're gonna need him. Is back as you know, I don't know what the time frame is on him. I see he's running around with a ball and that and that that's that's brilliant news. But the sooner we can get him in the better. Oh, oh I'm happy for Liverpool that look both of them would rather be us at the moment and I think that's that's the best thing you can say. When you're looking at the you're looking at the run ins, we've got some difficult games. There's no doubt about it. A derby I don't know a derby away is always tough, as bad as they are. United away is United away and, and Villa are a bit of a you know we should be winning our home games I know we did sports of the we should be winning our home games it's in the melting pot and we're in pole position I don't think you can ask for more than that yeah no I don't think you could Arsenal fan circle channel says it's 49 days until mid-May not 29 yeah but I think you have a couple of Champions League games in there don't you um, yeah, possible so load of games. Yeah, as so well. that's that. Um, that's that's what we're talking about here. Um, and it was Steve Murphy that said it wasn't me. So fucking blame him. Um, <laughs> <coughs> Keith, um, the two goal scorers today, Luis Diaz, he gets the equaliser. He's unlucky. Well, he's unlucky with the offside. He's possibly lucky with the finish. 
But and then Mo Salah, who you know, a lot of people bandied around say bit greedy, you know, didn't have a shooting boot on. Bum 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 bum. But Keith, overall, I think Luis Diaz has been brilliant. For the last couple of months, I think he's been absolutely brilliant. He's a real live where he's he's stretching teams. Could he get more goals? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But to see him continuing on a really good run and to see Salah just notching another one, this is where I keep going back to it, Keith. This was a rhythm setter today. I really feel it was a rhythm setter. And I think I, I, I might be talking absolute bollocks, but I think I might... I think what I'm saying might come to fruition and show itself in the next seven days against Sheffield United and Man United. But great to see them both get, getting goals for for very for different reasons. But they're so big for us. I think Diaz the way he stretches the teams is huge, and Salah just scoring goals. If Salah scoring goals, Liverpool are winning games. Keith. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. How many goals has Diaz got in the sea this season? I, I um, want to say twelve or thirteen in all competitions. Twelve or thirteen. Yeah, I yeah. think he's only got about seven or eight in the league. Um, I think that might be his 10th in the league today I think alright so I know they're all in double figures we know that but you know he's on course if he can bang in a few we could look to see 20 goals from Diaz which isn't a bad return but he does have to improve his, his numbers and his output and vary the type of um, attacks that he does but he is playing very well I would sell him tomorrow um, because his elf leg gives me the ick at this stage, and I don't want to see <laughs> any more of him. I hate his dad. <laughs> oh, I don't want to see any more of him. I said it a few weeks it's ago. A it's, a yeah, it brings me back to the comment a couple of weeks ago here. Start up a bleeding, uh, um, a reality TV show, <laughs> Tony McGregor and fucking Manny. I say it here, yeah, I don't know what. I say they didn't even pay the ransom. I say the cartel just said this. Okay, yeah. you just wreck him or you hate him. I dropped it him off. Yeah, <laughs> someone pick him up. <laughs> it's like it's like a couple of weeks ago when someone in the chat here said it's still one of my favourite comments of the season. He went, uh, I don't know who it was. It might have been Red Steve. And he said, listen, lads, I'm not mad up on the LV as a loss, but how the fuck is that fella still in Liverpool? <laughs> Have we kidnapped him now as well? But yeah, he's, he's, he's a bleeding melter, isn't he? He's a bleeding call into the bleeding, the authorities, the relevant authorities. Yeah. Now, all joking aside, look, I like Lewis Diaz. I think he's a good player. Um, we'll talk about in the summer about what we would do with the shape the squad, and, and he might be one that may feature in being sold. But at the moment, I think we need Lewis Diaz featuring and, and threatening I think a big turning point for him was the City game when he, he legged Walker and Rodri and, you know, people said, right, he's, he, he misses a couple of good chances that day that could have really fucking dented him. But he's, he's reacted well to it. He's, he's, mm. Even in that game, he reacted well to it and, and played really well. We need them all playing. You know, it's right, get Jota back and it's another option. While doing this with an out-of-form Gakbo, and Mo, Darwin and Diaz essentially are having to carry the load. And, you know, he's he's done well. Diaz, I, I think he's a good player. I think he's he's a different player. He's always getting tarnished with the Sadio Mane brush. Um he's just he's a different player to Sadio Mane. He's not gonna score them goals. He's he's not going to be that type of player. He he can frustrate at times, but you know, he done well today. I thought he took the goal well. Yeah, the scuttery one that was disallowed, he played, he done well on that as well. I just like to see our forward players scoring, our attacking players scoring. And we come out of that today with two goals. Our left winger and our right winger both scored them. Both of them, certainly Mo, wasn't at the bleeding races at all today. Uh, made a few bad decisions. But Mo has so much credit in the bank that that's allowed. You know, Mo has earned the right to say, <coughs> fuck you, I'm not passing, I'm having a shot. Because he's he's done 20 goals a season for seven years in a row. And if others can match them numbers, then they might get a bit of leeway. But yeah, delighted to see the two of them scoring today. Um, but I couldn't give a shit who scores once while winning. Um, but Diaz, yeah, he's he's good. But the yeah, old lad just, no. Yeah. He has seven league goals. Seven league goals. Seven league goals. Okay. Are we? 12 in uh, all competitions. 12 in all comps, fair enough. Well, he could be looking, at, you know, you'd expect him to hit at least 15 in all comps it's only three yeah. more you know what i mean like you'd yeah. expect that he yeah. a good run of form and he could hit 20 you know and then you'd say 20 is not bad yeah i i find the man comparison weird because i don't think he takes up the positions man did for liverpool i think we play a different nah, way it's just he's that easier a replacement you know yeah he's definitely much more of a wired player a front three don't operate the way they use no, no 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 yeah. i think i think i think man was 
was basically an auxiliary centre forward for, for a lot of the Two of them were centre forwards and yeah. Bobby yeah. was there. Um, yeah, and whereas when you look at it now, Salah seems to be a bit more wide now and definitely was at the start of the season. He's starting to gradually get in further in the pitch, but Diaz literally has chalk on his boots an awful lot of the game, you know, the sort of way. But look, that's by the boy. He, he scored a few goals on top of the league and all that. Um, Emma, I'm going to come to you before I go to Sean to finish off. Um, the other game today, City Arsenal. Um, didn't think it was a great game. Um, I think Key touched on it. I think it might have been Key touched on it about the referee, where just like you know, letting everything go was ridiculous. You know, you can't be just refereeing a game on, on the, the you know what's going on around. You have to referee for what it is. But the the impression, like I give them both a little bit of leeway, would have been the the uh, return after the international break. But to me, it looked like two teams. And maybe more City than Arsenal, where City were going, we have to fucking win this because them fuckers are one area. It was like City were winning it to react to Liverpool rather than City winning it to beat Arsenal, if you get me. Mm -hmm. It was like City was like the Muslim memory kicked in and went, we can't let these get away from us. We need to win this. And they pushed and pushed and pushed. But overall, I thought the quality of it was, was quite poor. Yeah. It, it, to me, it looked like neither team well, not neither team wanted to win but it's neither team wanted to lose basically okay. and i think arsenal probably could have and i know shawnee and myself are saying in the whatsapp that if arsenal probably just gambled a little bit more they probably oh. could have got something out i think they were very oh. narrow um i thought rice was unbelievable today i have to say um, and for all of the kind of possession that city had and to, they looked more threatening Arsenal had the better chances in the first half. It was just, it was a strange game. Um, but I just don't think that Arsenal rolled the dice enough to try and go and win it. Um, City were, were, were obviously trying to win it, probably not as much as they would normally do, but they, I think it was probably in the backs of both of their heads that, okay, we can go and try and win it here, but we need to make sure that we don't lose it. And it kind of, that's what you end up with, is it? A nil all draw. Um, it wasn't great on the eye. It wasn't the. It wasn't a Liverpool City game or a Liverpool Arsenal game. Even do you know what yeah, I mean? It was, yeah. and they, they, them games have been exciting this season. It was a, a kind of a, a nervousy kind of a, enough a game, and I just thought it just it, it just could have taken Arsenal just to roll the dice. That I like. I think they probably brought on Martinelli too late. They could have brought him on a little bit earlier to try and stretch them a bit. Like even when even when they had corners or like City had corners and Arsenal were collecting the ball and keeper looking upfield there was nobody upfield they were all within within the right they, they didn't gamble at all they had no they just had everybody back and um, I just think they could have rolled the dice a bit more. Is that is that Arsenal though, Sean? And look, I think Arsenal could have been a bit braver today. I I get that, but is that Arsenal basically saying to themselves, right? We we go here and get a point. We back ourselves to get more points than City between now and the end of the season, mm. and two more points than Liverpool. Is is that the way we could look at it, or was it just Arsenal no, did not just didn't do it? Where is this coming from? I'm just asking the question. <laughs> Me, I'm just not asking it. But where where is it coming from that Arsenal are this like that? Arsenal are like that are able to do that. No, I'm just asking the question. Did Ar is Arsenal approach to the game? No, that? because no, they have no right to be like they can How can they? I'm act not like saying that? they have the right to. I'm saying would, are <laughs> Arsenal thinking that way? That's how what I'm thinking. Because no, they haven't. Got, they haven't got the stones. If they had had a little bit, of, we would have beaten that City team today. Because we would have went that. We we would have smelled blood. I I just went gone. Why why is Jesus holding the fullback's hand? What's what's he got going on here? I don't he was know. very deep. He was very deep. Hey, it was ridiculous. Saka was very I narrow was as well. At, they were on the rack. They see far that back five is missing. Now, yeah. bear in mind, he's a couple of hundred million pound lads going into the. But wait, like, where's it coming from? The Arsenal at uh, this and that. Arsenal fell. Uh, have any of you seen that clip? Everyone hates him, right? I'm going to be honest with you. I love him. See Bernardo Silva. I absolutely love him. <laughs> All right. Why you, there's a clip you're going to see if you watch the City documentary some years won't right but why don't you see the clip of Bernardo Silva in the in the training ground when they're watching Arsenal play Southampton and they're throwing the league away and he's breaking a shot laughing yeah. he's just going 
Remember what when we went, look, look, look at this, and he's laughing. And they know they haven't got the stones. Guardiola as well as the same knows that Arsenal haven't got the stones. I don't know where you're getting it from. Oh, I'm not, no, hold on a minute. We're Arsenal <laughs> gonna, I don't, don't know. I didn't say, hold on a fucking minute. Hold on, Mikel, I'm, I to to I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm asking the question. I didn't say I think this. Back. I'm asking the question. If Arsenal go out with that attitude today, which was clearly not to lose the game, but then Arsenal in their own minds must think that with nine games to go, they can overhaul Liverpool by two points and also take more points than Man City. That has to be their outlook if that's what they've gone and done there today. Gav, Is it when that? You beat, give it over. When they beat us a few weeks ago, they were walking our families around oh. the pitch oh. after the game. Shani, I it's know that. But what I'm saying is, no, no, listen, Shani, Shani, Shani. Shani, I'm so oh, what I'm saying is have won a sausage. Do me a favor, will you? Shani, what I'm asking is, what is the reason for them going and doing that today? Because they is it just, that it, that's what I'm saying. They got is the it minerals? That's, that's the what... question I'm at. Right, that's fine. That's fine. I've asked the question. Is it no, we, the... we, you know what? We'll just take a draw. Do we? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about club. I couldn't understand that mentality. mentality. But that, but that's, but that seems to be the mentality today. I they couldn't understand that. Why would you Stop go and do that? They, they came out to the draw. They, they, they came out for a draw. It, it was very clear from the game Arsenal came out for a draw. So in their head, are they thinking they can outdo City and Liverpool for more points between now and the end of the season? Is that has to be? I that hope has so. to be the right I hope. I hope that that arrogant. I know what you're saying though. Fucking Egypt, like where did he get that from? They've no right to. I 100 percent get that. But if you look at the evidence today, with the way they play it, they play for a draw, in my opinion, and that must be their outlook. You know, Kev was saying it was fear, pure and simple. Maybe it was fear, but if, you, if 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 you're fearful of something, if you're fearful of something, you know, fair enough. God, but the top team. Try win, draw try today, win it. Like an Atletico. That, that you're breaking forward there, trust had absolute. And I, I'm at adding a few euros to the yoke here already. Yeah, well, I'll catch him. And he absolutely fills his togs when he goes three, when they go three on two. And he doesn't know what to do. He's all over the bleed shop. He's all mm. over the shop and picks the But you know what? I don't know why, because he haven't got the fucking minerals. That's as simple as that. You turn around going, where's this uh, bouncing around? And like, that, that out, it's outrageous to carry on out of him. I can't, I, and, and people's attitudes. No, I, I'm not Honestly. saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying, is this where they're at? That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, Ga- sorry, there's a few comments here. Uh, Gavin Moss says, Gav's trying to suck up to the gunners so he can get on Arsenal Fan TV. <laughs> I wouldn't last five minutes on that channel. Like, so let's let's put that fucking straight. Um, but I, I, I completely and utterly agree with what you're saying. But for me, looking at that today, I'm kind of going, well, they, they must think they can go and do this this way. Do you get me? Or was it just a case of, no, they're not very good and they managed just to get out with a draw because they, they aren't very good. But I don't believe they're not very good. Like, it's like Blaine torn around. The, it's like when Pog, they are all torn around, all the United fans are torn around the soon that's going, oh, show us your medals when you're talking about Pogba. Yeah. The soon that's like, what? <laughs> At the end of the day, looking at them, again, I'll speak for myself. For me, the way that I had to go today was draw, Arsenal win. City win mm. in that order because I you can only go on on what you've seen in the past. All right, I haven't seen Arsenal in a title race since I was ten years old, eleven years old. They got the big build up last year. It was over with five games to go. The league was wrapped up in April. To get it, it was over with five games to go. They completely filled that hugs year after year. We see City do 10 in a row, 9 in a row, 10 in a row, 9 in a row, 10 in a row, 9 in a row. When it comes to match, we've seen it for the last... Four, it's why they're looking at winning four titles in a row. You're going out what they've done. And they're the same team. Far from it. You, you can actually, you could you could see it today in them a bit, a little bit like... You're watching for years down the line watching City. We've been the ones in title races with them. And you're just thinking to yourself... Bernardo Silva's going to do something. De Bruyne's going to do some mad pass from a mad angle and they're going to score. Like, the, the sun got, it's not happening anymore. It, it, it is a very, De Bruyne is starting to look his age a little bit. Yeah. He, is starting, he looked and dreadful I, today, didn't he? He didn't yeah, look I, like he was going to score. I love De Bruyne as a player and I love Bernardo Silva as a player and I love Rodri as a player. They're not the same, but they're still Man City and they're still our biggest threat 
between now and me. Make no make no mistake about it. If you think Ash is not going, he'll drop to him, boys. No, hold on. You keep saying this. I didn't think that. I you asked did, the question. I did. Said, I said to yeah. you. I said to you. If Arsenal have come out and played like that for a draw, I have Arsenal in their mind got it that they take a draw here and outdo City and Liverpool. I'm not saying they're right. I'm not saying they're thinking that. I'm asking if, like, put it this way: if Liverpool went out there today against Man City and took a draw, you be we'd be all sitting here going, "Well, you know what? Um, we got a draw right there, and I think we can do this, 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 and this, and I think City might drop this, 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 and we'd be we'd be validating that." So all I'm saying is, is Arsenal doing, is, is this what Arsenal are doing? You know what I mean? Stop making me out for fucking things I didn't say. Right? You and your fucking, I don't care how big your fucking moustache is. I didn't fucking say that. <laughs> I'm asking the question, did Arsenal walk into the Etihad today and walk out of it thinking, ah, good point, we can go and outdo both of these over nine games for points for us. That's all I'm asking. I do think, I think right, the, fact that, the fact that they've gone from being top level with an advantage on goal difference mm-hmm. to going and taking... A point and look man city we played them a few weeks ago and we should have beaten them and we probably looked at that as two points dropped the, th- the difference with this arsenal thing is like they have to look and sean is right they haven't been in the title race yet they've not been in a race with city we've been there three years we've got over 90 points and only won the league once this is what you have to do the reason Liverpool were able to get over that line is they realised draws are as bad as defeats. Do you know, one point's not worth a shite anymore. You have to be going for three. Now, this Man City team isn't as strong as it was. But you're in a race here with three teams. Do you know what I mean? It's not just one team that you're trying to catch. Okay, you don't want to get beaten in these games. But Arsenal, I feel, probably needed to win that game. Right, they look at that run in now, they've not run the derby, they've a few, everyone has a few tricky games, there's no easy run, City probably do have the, on paper, the easiest run in, but I think Arsenal should have been going to win that today, like, celebrating a draw the way they've been celebrating a draw, when they've lost the, the stranglehold as such on, on the title race, is a bit weird to me, I think Arsenal have forced themselves into this sort of excellent team nonsense because they're telling everyone how good they are it's like the emperor's new clothes tell you how great they are and they yeah, tell you how they've been I mean. this is what i mean yeah. it's the over analysis and forensic analysis into everything like this sh- the absolute cod wallop i'm at the being listening to about your man koi havertz for the last six weeks they paid 70 million for him for starters yeah. he's eight goals and three assists in the league yeah. that's below par what you expect for the seven but he does this and he does that and he's playing with Give me a, do me a favour. If he's playing by Liverpool, he'll be getting pulled from pillar to post. Yeah. Honest to God, they get away with murder. And the only reason to get away with murder is, again, because media narratives. You have the, anyone who supports, you know, like that screaming out. They don't want us to win the league. They don't want City to do four in a row. They don't want us to win, win number 20. Arsenal is the part of least resistance for a half of it. Yeah. And that's why they get an easy ride off everyone in the media. He was opposed to Liverpool at City winning the league. And if, I, if you're opposed to City winning the league, I definitely understand it because of what they are and what they're built on. And I get that. But the the guff I've been listening to coming out about this, comparing Saka to Salah and all the game. Where, yeah. where is he today? Nowhere. When it comes to crunch, where did he go? When it comes he to crunch... Off. He fell over. I think he's playing him injured. I think he's playing the him four injured. Best, their, their two best players in all the biggest games this year have been about Gabriel and Saliba. Yeah. None of that none are attacking and it, them boys are only standing out because they've had to. We should have beaten them at Anfield. We battered them in the second half there. They battered us at the Emirates, fair enough. We were all over the shop that day. But we handled it. Well. Let's call a spade a spade here. Arsenal. Done nothing in the game worth the the last twenty years. I'm not hearing it. Give a bleed now. Okay. The last time Arsenal won the league, you could get away with losing five or six games in a season. This More is a than whole that. Six or seven. Up. All other ball game these days, like Keith says, uh, draws are losses, and we know that more than most. And again, I said it earlier on, we've galvanized ourselves over the, over these battles with City. Arsenal just haven't done that; they're not used to it. I'm not saying that they won't be in in the, in the years to come. Like they're they're doing well; they're doing better than the rest of the pack. All the other like the Spurs, United, Chelsea. So it's it's great that it's a three horse race rather than a two horse race, but you need to earn their stripes. Mm. Right. Well, look, Liverpool play Thursday. 
um, against Sheffield United. I think Arsenal play Wednesday against Luton. And City might be Wednesday night, is it? They're away Villa. at... Uh, home the, to Villa. Home, home, sorry, home to Villa. Home to Villa. So, um, yeah, there's some interesting games on there as well. Before we go, um, link is in the description for our fundraiser. Um, it is a go for me. It is for our fans supporting food banks and the Lighthouse, two of my organisations that do amazing work to help people that are struggling to make ends meet. The link is there if you want to donate. If you can't, copy the link, share it amongst your family, your friends, your colleagues, wherever it might be, and let people know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what it can do to help. Five, we're looking to get €5,000 for each of them, um, ASAP, and that would be absolutely huge for both those organisations. Phil's stuff is in there as well, his quest, um, his five Ironman races for the Laura Lynn um, Hospice in Dublin. The link is there as well. If you can help fill out, that'd be amazing. He's literally doing this on his own, so um, giving any sort of donation is, is a great help and a support one to let people know that they're, they're thinking of when he's trying to do this because it's it's insane what he's trying to do the latest football prizes um is up uh tomorrow i think um it's a young club signed friend jersey with led lights built in camera um or built in tv not camera that'll be a bit weird um built in tv and <laughs> and then um, 27 instant prizes including corporate tickets to liverpool versus atalanta in the Europa League uh, quarterfinal. Um, that's about it, I think. Oh, we want the golf day. Um, we're trying to get numbers. People are fucking nightmare, I swear to God. Yeah, I'm playing, yeah, I'm playing. Then you just fucking... I swear to God, you nearly have to go down and knock to that gaff and ask them for the fucking money. Um, but the big thing about that is where we make the money on the day is by sponsoring tee boxes, long drive, nearest the pin, all the sort of things. So if you can, talk and cop one at gmail.com. Get on to us. If you want to sponsor that, every single penny a sponsor does go to the charity, and that's where we make our money on the day. So if you can help, please do so. Get us on Instagram, get us on Twitter, get us on wherever. Um, but talkingcop1 at gmail.com, you get, we'll get an email to us. And if you want to donate or sponsor, put your company name on it, your family name, your dog's name, whatever you want, you can write a bleeding poem, I'll put it on it, it doesn't bother me. Um, bunch of sponsors, so that's that as well. Um, we should, we'll be back tomorrow, looking back on the weekend, tomorrow night at 10pm. We will have a couple of the 30 shows during the week as well, 10am in the morning. We will have reaction to Sheffield United and anything else we can find to fill the week as we go. Emma, anything else before we go? No, all good. You're happy? Yeah. Cool. Keith, We we, we, we stopped doing this thing at the end of the show. Do you remember we started with, with the one? Oh, yeah. We need to bring, we need to bring something like that back. Okay, I'll, I'll think of a question for next week. Gab, I'll toss it to the week, by the way. Ah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, yeah, anything else? Uh, Keith, anything else? Don't be fucking bullying me, the two is. Keith, anything else before we go? No, no, good stuff. Another win for the Reds. Uh, down to the show your minerals part of the season. Just keep going trucking and keep getting them points and we'll all be happy bunnies at the end of it. Except Arsenal fans, they won't be. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Shani, anything else before we go? No, I'm all, I'm all good. You're happy now? Never much, happy. Much, how much do you reckon you gave away <laughs> in money there tonight? I think you need Man, to read out that comment. Not a fiver, I'd say. What one? What comment? It was uh, about Shani uh, doing the intro to like an Arsenal documentary. Where is it? Oh, Whoever put it in, put it back in again. Hold on, I'll find it for you. Shani should do an intro for the Arsenal documentary. Switch this shit off and do something my world where we got live, <laughs> like sniffing on the way. <laughs> but on it, go here. Do you know what, Monty? Havani has watched that as documentary. The fella brought a Bluetooth speaker out and four speaks and started playing You Never Walk Alone with a boy. <laughs> you come off the bleed stage, will it? That was I'm amazing. Not I'm not joking you. <laughs> a Bluetooth speaker out. If some, if some, he had four like big KBLs on the corner of the ground. And he's trying to do a pass and, be, and poor Blade Reese Nelson is standing beside the speaker again, the ears brown on, but he's already in the pace <laughs> maker. He thinks this is gonna he thinks it's gonna help them rock up and they rock up to Anfield and get battered. Yeah. Like it, it, honest to God. Give me if that if 
if Ricky Gervais put that in the episode, he obviously say, go away, I'd take the bleed. Shani, if you have anything else now, I'm going to let me just mention that again. He goes <laughs> off again. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 fucking Bluetooth He's a speaker. <laughs> Jim, that fella. Reece and I hope someone has to be mad about him. Jerry and the pacemakers. There's a fan set of chances. I must have walked, Johnny. It didn't work. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, he's won loads of games at Anfield since he started playing. Well, you do, I believe. <laughs> but they've been, it's haven't they made up their own? You'll never walk alone. Show you that. Yeah, and it's about it's about prostitutes and junkies in yeah. London. Like, give me a play. Yeah. Do me a play. They've what? Still a one. They've, they've come to the London song, forever. Man. What? North London yeah. forever. They sing it They've before. They made the themselves guys, a song. Guys, guys, I have a suggestion. This this song was sent in from YouTube, and I think we can play it before the game. I'm going to go run a fight before. I'm only going. I'm only watching this. I'm only is this. I, I honestly, I was waiting for Jeremy Beale to walk down. Hold on, no, no, okay, no, I'm, I'm I'm being genuine here. Hold on. They've have they produced the song for themselves, or have they? No, it's like their version of Jamie Webster. Yeah. Has, okay. has written a song about North London and he's going on about browsers and junkies and all of it. Like, and Arsenal and are I'm taking not, this on as their official anthem, like. And I'm sorry, I won't say junkies, I'll say drug addicts because I don't like the word, but that's why yeah. he refers to them as in the oak. Honest to God. I, I, I swear. And an Arsenal playing this in the ground, like. The they play, the uh, they play at the same yeah. time as Liverpool would play, like, you never walk out. Ah, you're yeah, having me on. Yeah. Still no, a fan of now, where you Gav? And they're singing oh, LA, oh. LA, LA, LA. Holy Jesus. Andy do Andy got dog. Well. Andy Look got dog the from the training ground as well. His name is Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're, making, you're making that up. I swear I'll be like Googling now this minute before they, you come up. They got a dog for the training yeah, ground called black, Win. They, they got a black Labrador called Win around the calf. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Man. That's him. Ah, that's amazing. Look, look up the lyrics to their LA, LA, LA song. Their version of LA, LA, LA. LA. I know that. They, they mention Anfield and Old Trafford, don't they? In the we, won, we won it at Anfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Waffle. Anyway. Um, won it on the PlayStation. Mad stuff. Right. <laughs> anyway, what an ending. I didn't know that. You, you learn something new every day. Anyway, that has been the Talking Cup for Sunday night. Thanks a million to Emma, Shadi and Keith. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thanks a million to everyone in the chat. Don't forget to check out those links for the charities. We will be back tomorrow to discuss the weekend's football. Yeah, that's it. Liverpool, top of the lake. Over and out.